urban poverty are determined as the problems that we face in the city. Some examples include water rationing even in middle class estates like let's say South Sea and South Sea. You may find in a week some people get water twice and some estates get water 24-7 and some have none at all and some use even magia mtaro. About urban poverty, I understand it is, uh, it is in informal settlements. Because we have so many informal settlements in Nairobi, for example in Nairobi, if I get example of Nairobi, whereby people living there, they lack most of the social amenities and they lack most of the, uh, the resources that they need to live in a good, in a better life. For example, water, healthy, uh, good environment, clean environment, most of the things they lack those people living in the uh, urban slums or informal settlement. So you find that one family, if somebody earns less than 300 shillings per day and he has about five people in a house, to, to support that family is a challenge. So you find that sometimes to have three meals a day is a problem. Mimi ni kwa mtoto disability na hasoni, ako 10 years na ni gara. Kwa hivyo hapo mina yasema sana kwa umaskini, mi kwanza sana sana na yonea hapo, kwa watu wale mafu. Tunalea hawa watu hii, ile upati shule zao ni expensive sana. Sika venye unaezaenda, upate kaya serikali mtoto nomo ni flee. Special, tunaitishwa pesa. Hata mingi tuliku hata mtoto nomo wa sekondali, unalipishwa. Atufiki bado hiyo. Sami naona ile umaskini bado hiko mtaani, inatufingilia na watoto wetu bado. Urban poverty. Is the lack of the knowledge. Mm -hmm. see, yes, there is nothing else. You, when you have the knowledge, you do it. Poverty in Kenya is very quickly relatable to rural areas. Rural areas are poorer than urban areas. And that has, in some instances, almost made it look like in urban areas there's nothing much to worry about. And so pockets of poverty in urban areas have actually been left out in some of the discussions that we've had around how to deal with poverty in the country. Even amongst policy circles, the, there's a disagreement on what aspects of poverty should um, feature with regards to resource distribution. There are a couple of um, basic global standards that everyone, I think, knows about. Uh, the poverty rate, how many people are poor, the poverty line, uh, how many, what is the, the level of income at which below you're considered poor? What is the poverty gap? How far below that line you are? What is the poverty severity? How bad your poverty is? And uh, absolute poverty versus rel relative poverty. So there are a lot of ideas that were circulating surrounding poverty. Poverty is, uh, is one aspect that should be looked uh, critically. Both uh, uh, the traditional definition of poverty in terms of uh, infrastructure access and in terms of the income uh, income requirements uh, for, for a household to be declared poor and uh, thus influencing decisions on allocation of, uh, of resources in the future. If you look at the trend line between from 1991 to 1997, rural poverty uh, moved up from 47 to 52 percent but in the urban areas it moved from 25 to 49 percent. It means that the people in the cities are continuously getting poor and um, the rural people, while they are poor, uh, doesn't mean that the urban people are not poor. One of the contributors to urban poverty has been um, policy that addresses um, the influx of people in, in urban areas and especially the peripheral urban area where uh, a lot of inform informalness exists. We have all women who never go to up country. When they came to Nairobi, maybe they were divorced and they cannot do any job. Maybe they live on begging to, to those people who are able within the village. So uh, the number is big, but the rating of that qualification of poverty is a problem according to the experts. that policy, none of the sub-locations in the urban areas came up. 
And the reason that urban areas did not show up is because we did not use poverty in crafting that, in, in, in crafting the second policy. We simply used access to water, access to electricity, education, and health. And then we put up an index on access. Some of the uh, urban areas, their problem is not access to these facilities. The problem in urban areas is ability to pay, which is a slightly different problem from marginalization. Because urban poverty has different shapes to it, right? So in rural areas, if you're in Baringo or if you're in Laikipia North, the biggest problem you have as a poor person is that you have to walk 10 kilometers to get water. Now, someone in Kibra doesn't have to walk 10 kilometers to get water but the water they get is very expensive. For example, access to health. There are people, even in some slums, you go for two kilometers, you get a health center. But in some places, you go for 70 kilometers. The formula that was placed as a matter of population factor has never looked into the changes, the change factor in this. We really find the small resources we have, we really strain to give service to these people. Last month here, I find actual costing. Awaku fanya actual costing kujua uh, ni feta ngapi sinaitajika kuweza ku, kutoa uduma fulani. Kwa mfano kutengeneza barabara ama ku, kuweka project ya maji. Families ambazo wako katika Kerio Valley. Maybe unesa enda kilomita moja ndio uweze kutanisha two families. Na hiyo feta ukisema paed ni karibu 10,000 shillings. Uweze chukua elfu shirini na uweze uh, kuatengeneza kwa project ya maji. Ilali sehemu kama Nairobi ama uh, urban areas. Ukiweka pai moja ya maji, uh, ya maji labda inesa serve watu saidi ya kumi ama ishirini. Lakini kwetu naitaji pipe sumia moja ndio uweze kusafu two families. Na hiyo pia lasimu wangalia. It's another aspect of uh, poverty index. Uh, we on and on we've been trying to raise to CRA to look at this. As one, either that we need to look at a way of increasing the um, equalization fund and increasing this equalization fund we need to look at the approach and the structure of this equalization fund so that we're able to identify the regions that are actually need the equalization fund. The current setup, we are basing on counties. Addressing urban poverty will also need a bit of special attention as compared to the very generalized uh, mechanisms that we've used for the general poverty discussion, especially in rural areas. And it is important going forward to make sure there is no marginalization within the county, to make sure there is equitable distribution of resources within the county itself. And we can only do that if we have poverty numbers below the county. Evolution must work so that uh, the opportunities that Kenyans think of accessing only in Nairobi should be accessible in Bungoma, mm -hmm. should be accessible in uh, Wasingishu, they should be in West Pokot. If it does not work in any given county, and we say poverty anywhere is a threat to property everywhere, yeah. we need to ensure devolution works so that we grow together. National government. Pesa inya wanapeana ni kidogo sana yenye wanapea eh, county. So ilikuwa mzuri kama wange at least wapeane hiyo pesa ya kulingana na vile county iko. Ndio at least hata hiyo sawa kufu, eh, watu wakitaka kupewa services. So itakuwa ngumu kuwapewa hiyo services. We say ni usawa lakini pesa hiyo ni kidogo. Wakitaka kukawa kawa ni kidogo at least hiyo usawa itakuweko kwa sababu kuna penye itafika na penye itafika. Wataangalia kwanza kuwa ni gani ndio first priority ndio wasaidika seems to be a need for some form of accountability, uh, maybe increased citizen engagement. Uh, what's, what's, what is there doesn't seem adequate for, for providing public engagement. Uh, there's some concern about the census, uh, its transparency, and whether the information is relevant to the current setting. Uh, also the, the poverty data and whether the information used in the poverty data is useful right now. There's a lot of concern about planning and the adequacy of planning and the budget execution and utilization and then both the national and the county level. And uh, that was also an area of concern in the, in the groups we had the plenary session. So I think uh, maybe that's a big area you should take forward. Uh, there's a section on prioritization and whether we are spending money on the right things. Within the public participation bill, 
there's a requirement there's a requirement that describes how public participation is supposed to happen there's a there's, there's some standards you're supposed to fulfill there's some levels you're supposed to agree on if that is not fulfilled that means that public participation can be deemed null and void by a court of law this is a mechanism a constitutionally provided mechanism for you to intervene in the affairs in public affairs from a very powerful and meaning that you can actually have the control of budget uh, issued with a court injunction stopping her from spending the budget of a particular county government or national government based on your court application and lack of public participation. Yeah.